comes to creating toes on a mount, there's many different ways to do it. Um, the, the method that I've developed with the rolls of clay, that seems to work really well for me. Like I say, there's many other ways. You can just pump them full of caulk, some people do. Some people smush them full of clay, and then uh, you know, like a big old wad or a ball of clay in there, and, and then squish it out afterwards when they're trying to shape them. Um, I see all different methods being used, and I see all different results. And some of the results are really bad at the point where it, it's quite obvious they overstuffed them or overcocked them or whatever and they can never get enough clay smushed around or whatever it is they have in there to ever get any definition back in so it, it's important to remember what you're taking out of there and replace it with a comparable amount of whatever it is you choose to replace it with so you can get the skin back to where it belongs you'll see me Dremel the Achilles area and some other definition areas or rough some definition areas where I want to show muscle detail. Uh, the purpose for that is I'm getting rid of that slippery shiny hard skin of the foam and giving the caulking or the glue whichever you're using a good surface to bond to and, and uh, mostly with the Achilles area it's, it's more about thinning there than it is actually the, the glue being able to stick. I want that area to be thin so it almost feels like there's no foam left there. So, and, which is natural on a live animal. It feels like it's just skin to skin there, which it is with a little bit of, of uh, connective tissue. Most animals, I guess I don't know of any animal that has a long tail that doesn't use their tail for balance. It's another very important issue and something to keep, keep an eye on when you're positioning the tail and looking at reference. Why is that tail in the position it's in? when the animal's doing what it's doing. Is it, is it for balance or is it just relaxed? You know, it, there's, there's usually a reason the tail is in a position that it's in. If you've been competing at the lower levels and you're moving into the masters, you might want to consider making your own form at this point if you haven't already. There's supposed to be some serious advantages point-wise to, to making your own form, but you have to keep in mind it has to be done correctly. So, and that's where a lot of people might miss out. They think that they should be getting extra points for making this or that themselves, when in fact they might just as easily be losing points because they didn't do it correctly. I'm starting to blow dry this out now, and at this point, to me there's no difference whether it's competition or commercial piece. You want good loft and fluff in this mount. You want it to look clean and shiny. And now we can start seeing the top line. We can start seeing our hair patterns and adjusting them. And there and move it around on the knee area and stuff. You just gotta look at all this stuff and make sure everything's where it belongs. Look at the top line and what I mean, does, does the tail have a nice flow coming off the body? You know, does it look like it's part of the spine or is there a lump there? And does it look, you know, distorted or out of place, you know? Anything that looks out of place probably is. So. Make sure that there's no wrinkles in the skin as it fluffs out. You'll see a line in the fur if there's a wrinkle in the skin. So a lot of times you don't even need to feel a mount to see that there's wrinkles or lumps in it. You can just see the, the very top surface of that fur and see the flaws. So. Taxi that skin around. <laughs>